Hey guys, this is Richard from Spirits of Japan. We are on our um, fourth segment um, concerning the list of emperors of Japan. I'm kind of going down the line. First was uh, Emperor Jimu, then Suize, and then three to nine, the third to the ninth emperors. We went down because there's not a lot of information on them. Uh, we are now on um, number 10, and one of my favorite emperors. Uh, his name was Emperor Suijin. He was the 10th emperor of Japan um, from 97 BC to 30 BC. He became emperor when he was 50 years old and died at the age of 119. Yeah, 119 years old. Um, very interesting about Sui Jin because there was a lot of first in his um, in his uh, reign, and uh, you know this whole uh, the first to the ten emperors and uh, a little bit beyond of of the sixty something times the capital had changed, forty something times it was in and around Kashiha Na Nara. Um, uh, Sakurai area. And so what's interesting is that um, Sui Jin, uh, he, um, he had a lot going on. First of all, um, Sui Jin was, of course, the um, result of his father, Emperor Kaika, and Ikaga Shikome, uh, which was his uh, Emperor Emperor Kaika's father's lover before. She already had a couple of kids, and he married her and had Emperor Suijin. So Emperor Suijin marries this lady named Princess Mimaki, and Mimaki has uh, him have six children, um, uh, two princesses and four boys, it looks like. Um, but also Suijin well, had some consorts. He actually had two consorts. One of them was uh, a young lady named Owari no Oama, uh, uh, he make and she uh, had four children. Uh, looks like two boys, two girls, and then there's one that I'm not even going to try to pronounce because I'm not going to do it justice. But I'll put it up right here so you can you can read it yourself. Uh, but she had a boy and a girl. Now from these two 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 consorts, um, from uh, Owari no Oama, uh, came a young lady named uh, Nuna Kiiri. So we'll call her Nuna. And then from the other uh, uh, consort came a young lady named uh, Toyosu Kiiri. So we'll just call her Toyosu. Um, he had given these two princesses a very important job in the 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 uh, palace, which wasn't really a palace. It was a 1,500 square foot. It still sits there today, a um, uh, little um, um, palace. It's got a, a shrine behind it. It uh, he, he had two gods, Amaterasu, who's the supreme goddess of Japan, and then he had another god in there, and it was like, I guess, conflicting energies. So he brought the girls in. He says, look, I'm going to give you a job. I need you to find resting places for these girls. Now, we know that Amaterasu now is enshrined in Issei Jingu, which is two and a half hours east of Osaka um, in Mie Prefecture. But at that time, um, um, prior to her being moved there, she was housed in, you know, in the palace. And so um, Toyosu took uh, Amaterasu and created a house for her. And then uh, Nun Nuna took took the other god and created a house for him. So I guess he was the issue because she had so much um, um, stress doing this that her hair actually fell out. Uh, this uh, uh, she, could, she ended up not being able to perform her duties. So um, he also, uh, Emperor had a great um, um, aunt who was also a shaman, who was his grandfather or great grandfather's daughter. Um, and her name, hold on, and I'll get it for you here because it's a, uh, was Princess ya Yama, Yamato to Himomoso Hime. So she, um, um, you know, hearing of this, uh, began making her way to where he was. I guess during this whole time in the fifth reign of his emperorship, um, wow, there was a, a plague. And I guess it lasted for two seasons. Um, um, and in the seventh reign, this uh, Princess y Yamato to makes her way to, you know, hearing about all this issues going on. And she tells him, and she was a, what we call a Miko, a shaman. And uh, I guess she, she had been 124 years old at this time. 
That's all I can figure doing in my research. I may be wrong, but uh, calculating seventh period of his reign when she was born, even if she, you know she was born right when Emperor Kore died, which was her father. So she makes it there and says that she has this um, um, this the, the idea that Omono Nushi, which was a god whose granddaughter married the first emperor, Jimu. Evidently, he was feeling disrespected. He was uh, not happy with things going on, so he um, he's the one uh, that took responsibility for the plague. So when he does this, um, uh, he wants to be venerated. He wants to be, you know, respected. So uh, that night, I guess, Emperor Suijin has a dream, and he's told to find out, uh, go look for this guy called Otata, Otata Neko. Yeah. Otata Neko was actually um, claimed to be the son of Omono Nushi and a young girl who eventually becomes a deity called Ikutama. We actually have a shrine to her here in Osaka. And uh, that was their child. So um, he's like a god, you know. And so... Um, they find Otata Neko. They they start Omiwa Shrine, um, and the the shrine becomes uh, the whole mountain. Actually, Miwa is is a, is a sacred site, and he becomes the first priest of Omiwa, and the plague subsides. Everything goes back to normal. Everybody's happy. So at that time, um, Sui Jin says, "Well, this is my chance to really make things uh, better." So what he does is he uh, sends out the first what we call Shido Shogun, the first actual Shogun. Shoguns really didn't start showing up until like 700. Um, but uh, I guess we could call them, you know, generals or Shoguns that he sent out in four different directions. Uh, he sends these guys out to, to you know, kind of get a hold on what's going around. He's the first... Um, uh, person to do that, the first emperor to do that. So he sends out the shoguns, uh, they secure areas, they get an idea what they want to do, they establish 137 governors. So that was the first time that happened. Um, it's actually had those governors take the first census of that area at that time. And he was also the first uh, emperor to uh, to uh, uh, demand the construction of actual ponds and canals. All these beautiful ponds that we see now is likely uh, from that period of time where he got the idea. Who knows? Uh, but that's what it is. Uh, so he, um, he, he's, uh, you know, he's got, he's got his little uh, governorship going here. He's got everything going. He's got everybody in line. And then he starts, I guess he's getting up there in age. He had 12 kids and all. Um, so, But when he uh, was getting near his age, he, he pulls in a couple of uh, the boys. Uh, one's called Ikume, and the other is, uh, uh, totally, I've totally forgot, o Oiriki, I think. Hold on. Uh, oh, it's Toyoki. Toyoki. So Toyoki which was the son of the second consort, uh, the one we couldn't pronounce the name. We'll put it up there again. And um, Ikume, um, he brings them together, and he goes, look, he says, I want one of you to to be um, the next emperor, cause, uh, you, you know, and I've got to, to uh, select this. So is there any way that I can to, um, choose this heir? Um, I thought I, I thought about it, and I, I, I want to know what your, your, your dreams were. Um, what have you dreamt about lately? And um, so he, uh, he, <laughs> the, the one of them said that they had climbed Mount Miwa and said that they had shot seven or eight, eight spears into the sky and took his sword and uh, threw it around, um, swayed it, waved it um, eight times in, in the sky. And, um, and so the, the younger prince, uh, Ikume said he dreamt of climbing uh, the mountain. Uh, the mountain at that time was called Mimoro. And uh, he took uh, four ropes on all four sides and, and spanned the mountain to protect it. And uh, so um, he also chased away sparrows that were eaten. Um, some food on the mountain. Now, it's, it's something, it depends on what you read. Um, but millet. And I don't, it doesn't get into that exactly why that was important. Maybe somebody can enlighten me for that. But then, um, so 
at that time he said, Ikume, he says, you're the one who has to protect this. That means protection, so uh, uh, you will be named Crown Prince. And then he looked at Toyoki and says, I want you to govern the East. And uh, instead of being jealous and mad or anything like that, he accepted it. And uh, evidently Toyoki has uh, clans that are still alive today in Eastern Japan. So uh, here we go. We have all of these, uh, you know, uh, it depends on what you read. Again, the 48th year of his reign is when the when the, the kids were decided in the 60th year of his reign. Um, that was when he, he wanted to, uh, 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 you know, the, the, to protect these three treasures. Um, the treasures at that time were kept in an Izumo shrine. And Izumo is a very, very famous shrine up in um, western Japan, I guess, on, on the Sea of Japan side. And... Um, he dispatched uh, generals to go get those swords to bring them back because he needed. He felt that if whoever possessed those three treasures, which was the the sword, the uh, the mirror, Amaterasu's mirror, and the uh, uh, jewels, that uh, whoever possessed those would be the most powerful person in Japan. So what he wanted to do is disperse those items. But he, when he went to get them, the actual head of uh, the guy who was protecting them uh, was uh, gone. And his assistants, uh, you know, royal decree, he gives up the items. And then the other guy comes back to Izumo and is like pissed. And he's like, you know, you got to be kidding me. Uh, you should have dispatched me. You should have waited for me. He says, no, it was royal decree. I had to do it. So uh, he took him out in a pond and, uh, I don't know, somehow secretly switched his sword, ends up killing the guy. And then uh, the emperor finds out about it, dispatches generals again to go get him, bring him back and kill him. Uh, so it's like just, man, there's a lot of detailed information, interesting stories. Um, but I like him. I think Emperor Sui Jin, um, and what it's, what's nice is you still have tangible things that you can go and look at and see. Uh, while wow, this is probably where they were. This is, you know, right beside a, a big canal, right in front of uh, the palace there. The, I, we keep, I keep going past, but it's more of a shrine. Um, is the is the canal that canal later on would be uh, a very vital source of trade and people coming in and that's where actually Buddhism in 560 AD uh, was brought in along this canal so it's uh, Sakurai area was known as the last road of the Silk Road so it's um um I was in for Sui Jin a lot going on uh in his uh you know reign from 97 to 30 and uh he's just a Pretty cool guy. So uh, there you go. That's the 10th Emperor. Uh, stay tuned. We've got 126 of these to do. Actually, 127 because there's one they didn't count. And uh, we'll just keep plugging along. Uh, again, Richard from Spirits of Japan.